Hi, gorgeous Scorpios. This is part two. Now, we were just talking about the seventh house. We were just talking... I'm sorry. Something was going on over here with Spirit and it threw me off. Something was... talk. We were talking about the seventh house. And more or less, the seventh house is covering that eighth house. You don't have any planets in that sign right now. But the eighth house for you is... Gemini, and I call Gemini Jekyll and Hyde. You're a hundred percent either emotional or logical about what the rules are to the relationships, because that's Gemini. A hundred percent emotional for all the right and wrong reasons, or logical for all the right and wrong reasons. But they don't necessarily connect well. You're either on this or you're on that, not necessarily in balance of the two at once. And is asking you within these relationships, what are the roles of them? What are the responsibilities of them? What are the joint efforts, joint finances, joint resources? Are they joint? Are you doing your part? Are the rest, is the rest of the world in these relationships doing their part? Is it one or the other? Are we, are we just, or is it injustice? Is it, is it in justice? Or is the balance out? So, joint finances, resources, efforts, what are the rules of the relationships? But it's going to come back to the actual relationship and the conversation that's going on with that relationship, which is what we were talking about in the seventh house. Taurus. Taurus just wants the relationship to be of heaven. Why can't it all just be good? I want everything to have a beautiful relationship. Why can't we all be beautiful, loving people and live in heaven? That is how Taurus is. Taurus really wants it to be great and will work hard to create it to be so. However, independence, individuality, uniqueness, freedom, self-worth, self-value, self-esteem is coming towards Eris. Trouble, toil, and strife. So where is the relationship carrying over those injustices of the past, the trouble, toil, and strife. And where is that redirecting the independence, the individuality, and the inventive self within the relationships that's not quite allowing that illumination of your fire, your true fire of the relationship to be what it should. And it's going to definitely go into those rules, those walls, those boundaries of what are the rules to the relationship, the joint efforts, joint resources, joint finances? How is it having a way of resurrecting instead of just staying stagnant? This is what we're looking at for you in the month of November for the eighth house. Now, the ninth house happens to be cancer for you. This is your higher ethics, your higher morals, your spiritual urges, your higher education, your philosophy, your religion. It's your wisdom, your higher mind, your vision. This is where I often say the higher self is. If it's coming into that higher self energy. And for you, you've got the North Node here, which has been trying to tell you all year what you need to learn about these ethics these morals, these spiritual ur urges, your higher education, your higher lear learning, trusting in your intuition, trusting in, in your own personal psychic self, your connection with that higher self, and trusting in that intuition, that truth from within. And it's been asking you all, all year, the North Node has been, you have to learn this about yourself connection with that higher self in order to move forward in a more positive, healthy, and healing way. And I feel like this energy is definitely going to be connecting with you this month through what's going on with that self-awareness and that communication. If you are actually slowing down and really paying attention to the communication that you're giving and you're receiving, that you're so quick to want to jump the gun, slow down and start seeing the bigger picture. And as you see the bigger picture, you're going to learn a lot about yourself along the way. And your higher self is there to teach you it because the North Node is there if you're only willing to listen about these energies as they're coming through. Now that 10th house, your honor, your reputation, your prestige, your financial success and foundation. This is Leo for you. You you tend to shine here. It's ruled by the sun. You tend to shine here and look good 
here. There's nothing here at the time to influence you, go for you, or against you, except for the guardians of the pole. The guardians of the pole are always there, which will smack you down if you are trying to push too hard. Like I said, this is going to come back to your communication. The guardians of the pole will always help that foundation to grow. The guardians of the pole will always help you to find successful endeavors. Okay? And this is not me talking. I don't say endeavors, okay? They, they if they're bringing in that higher reputation, that higher financial success, all of that glory that can come from it, that is the guardians of the pole saying you've learned a lesson and they're helping you to achieve it because you're, you have worked in that proper higher self energy. They won't allow you to have it for long periods of time if you're not being noble about it, is what I'm getting from them at this po point. <coughs> See, here goes the throat again in this. I said, for you, this has everything to do with communication this month. This says that you have nothing going against you except for yourself. And if you're being noble with your honor and your reputation and your prestige, then you will stay forward, moving forward. But they just said that if you are not being noble, then you will be found unworthy and your communication will take you in a wrong direction. And it's important for you to realize that because this has everything to do with you connecting with your dreams, your your dreams, your higher vision, and your goals. <clears throat> but it's all going to have to do with communication this month on if it makes or break you about how noble your communication is. Yeah, that's coming basically from the higher self. Trying to help you know what you need to understand as you move forward. Because like I said, if I get choked up, there's a reason for it. As you come into that 11th house, your community, those larger groups, friends, wishes, goals, memberships that help you go towards your ambitions. There's nothing here also to go against you. And that would be being projected from that, from that, uh, did I count this wrong? No, I didn't count it wrong. From that 10th house, that would be the guardians of the pole that are trying to make sure that you have your community correct and that it helps you build the support of those goals, wishes, and dreams. But it all is going to come right back down to that communication this month. And what you do with it up until the 20th when Mercury goes direct. And then where you're going to take it after the 26th. You're going to have major changes happening. But I don't feel like you're going to see them necessarily 100% until after that new moon. Make sure that you're having proper communication with the community. Those groups. Those friends. Those memberships. Of where you're trying to build those wishes, goals, dreams, and ambitions. Now your 12th house. Happens to be Libra. Libra is coming through an end of a cycle. So a part of you that has been your subconscious, your hidden self, your unconscious karmic debts, your self-deception, those mental illnesses that we hold on to and we believe in, self-sacrifice, self-undoing, our bad habits and frustrations that lead us to grief, sorrow, shame, and blame that we hold on to. This is Libra for you. You want to balance this. You want harmony in your past ideas and your past views. But you also bury it. It's like your skeleton's in the closet. If it didn't work out for you, you bury it and then let me not look at it and I'll pretend that it's all okay. And this is how I'm going to create harmony and balance. These things are definitely coming up for you this month. Because, like I said, that has to do with what is going on with Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune. With how Halley's Comet is about to come through. And it's definitely forcing the changes to come through. We're not going to see Halley's Comet, but it's entering very close to Neptune's orbit. Their orbits are coming like really fast. And over this month, it's going to bring that 12th house in your face. And this has a lot to do with that communication. Because if that communication is not coming outwardly in healthy ways and is not being spoken to you in healthy ways, 
you yourself or outwardly than the grief, secret, sorrow, shame, blame that has been the self undoing, the self deceptions, the self sacrifices, the karmic debts can't be healed but the end of the cycle is coming in the next three years starting now so it's coming to an end of a cycle for a new cycle so you're having a chance of like clearing like like clearing like like clearing the energy of there finishing a cycle starting something new putting all the past life bullshit to bed and this is definitely a very powerful energy for you of resurrection and it's starting with these energies coming through right now as Neptune this month is getting ready to go direct because Neptune is looking at the negatives more than the positives because up until the 27th when it goes direct, that's what it does. So it's asking you to get right with those secrets, sorrow, shame, blame, self undoing, self deception. By communicating with yourself right, slowing down, listening to your own self-healing, and then acknowledging what might be going on around you that you also are not acknowledging. I love you guys. Bye.